Navadweep, right? We're going on Navadweep Parikram. We're going to have Harinam Sankirtan through the streets of Navadweep. First of all, we will go to Brahma Puskar. Unchahat and Kurukshetra. Breakfast will be at the Panchaveni. And then we have to cross the bridge. Before crossing the bridge, we have breakfast. Then we cross the bridge, go into Navadweep. And Navadweep, we will see the um, Samadhi of Jagannath Das Babaji, Bhajan Kutir and Samadhi of Jagannath Das Babaji, and also uh, Dham Bhubanesh. Dameshwar Mahaprabhu, the deity of uh, Vishnu Priya. So, Paramtala, so, they mean the Shiva, Krudamaya, yeah. So, very crowded, very small places. We won't be able to have talking there. No talking. We'll just go there, see these places, have darshan, and move on because. It's a very small, you can't really do much. Yes, you have to be very careful going into Navadweep. Try to stay together. When? Prabhupada was saying last time when we had the Parikrama, one of the ladies got lost and it was one of the security managed to find her and bring her back to the party. Anyway, it, it's difficult because we're going into Navadweep and we're a lot of people and the streets are, you know, streets are narrow and windy here and there, left and right. Not so easy, you can easily get lost. And you go in for darshan, and, and some people will take longer, and some people will come out quicker. Party tends to move fast, and other people will take longer time, will get spread out. So it's easy to get lost. Navadweep, it's a little, it's a bigger place. It will be difficult to find the devotees if you do get lost. Proposing. We have a, a different route from previous years, so, you know, don't think that you know the route because it's going to be different from before. If you do get lost, then you have to go back to Mayapur. <laughs> you, that's, you just tell people Mayapur, they'll, they'll help you out. But to find the Sankatan <laughs> party will be a little difficult. And the camp is... Mahisura. The camp is outside the outside of Navadri. So we'll do a bit more walking today. We haven't done much walking yet, but to, today we'll, we'll be doing quite a bit of walking because we've got to go through Navadri, move around to these places, have darshan, and then come back. So the talking will be before breakfast and then. And then, and then, yeah. So, uh, the Krodamaya Temple is in the marketplace. It's very congested. It's a small area. It's a, a big Shiva deity. It's nice to go in and see and maybe offer a little dakshin there, give a few coins or something, you know, and but go and see it. But it's, it's in the marketplace. It's very crowded area. So you have to be very careful. There are a lot of people moving around and not everybody is with us. There's even other sanctuary parties. We saw yesterday there was a group there. The Russian, Kodya, Mass Russian devotees, they were having their sankirtan. 
so it's difficult to keep up with the devotees. So try to stay together. Don't go off on your own. Always be with other people. Try to keep a group together. Otherwise, you can get lost. To find the camp, Mahisur. Mahisur is the name of the camp. I don't think people will know it. You ask people about this camp, nobody will know. So, <laughs> it's important to try to stay together. Many people distributed books. We had a good, a good group of people doing book distribution. All right, Nitai Doya Das, 50 books. Lokeshwari, Lokeshwari Nitai Das. How many books? Three books. Thirty books. Ishwar Das, 20 books. Nittai Charan Das, 15 books. Ruparagana Das, 15 books. Lila Kara Das, 20, 35 books. Priya Bala, 10 books. conservative town and we should try to present an orderly procession. You're only a part of the group. Of course, so many more devotees will be joining us from Mayapur. Anyway, we'll try to remind everyone at breakfast time, when, because everyone will be there then. And before breakfast, we'll have drama at Puskar. We'll have some katal there. Puska, right? We'll hear about Puska. Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna. Anything else? So, Tulsi Puja? Where's the Tulsi?
All right, so this is Puskar across the road. That was Puskar. We're going to hear about the wonderful pastimes of Puskar. Hare Krishna. Hope you are able to hear Maharaj. If you are able to hear, then move forward, please. Don't block the road. Move forward. Everybody just can't. Nobody moves. Anyway. Alright, so Puskar. We'll tell a little bit about Puskar first. Maybe some people don't know. Uh, Puskar, anyway, is the place where Lord Brahma is worshipped. Lord Brahma, uh, one time it's told, the Pananas tell us that one time Lord Brahma was engaged in doing sacrifice and when you perform sacrifice when you do some yagya you should have your wife with you by your by the side when you sit and do the yagya so lord brahma was waiting for his wife to come who is the wife of lord brahma yeah. who is the wife of brahma Saraswati. so he was waiting for the wife to come and it was coming to the auspicious time, you know, that everything's done, karma candy activities, there's auspicious times when you do this, don't do that. So the auspicious time was coming for the yagya to be done, and they were saying, you have to, we have to do it, it's coming up. So he's calling his wife, and the, you know, the wife is saying, I'm coming, I'm coming, give me more time, just let me, you know. You know the ladies, you know. <laughs> they need a little time. So she was telling her husband, just wait, I'm coming just now. And it came time and, and still she hadn't come. And the Brahmana said, well, what are we going to do? Your wife didn't come. So then they suggested anyway, you know, look, take another wife. <laughs> Here's a nice girl. She can do it. So this other girl, this was Gayatri. So it then happened that Gayatri sat with Brahma and he did the ritual. And then Saraswati came. And so what did she think? Hell has no fury like the wrath of a woman. You heard that before? Yes. It's, it's a famous movie. <laughs> And it, 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 it's, it's true. Anyway, Saraswati revealed the wrath of a woman and she cursed Brahma that you, what kind of husband, you could not wait for your wife to come. You took a second wife without even asking my permission. And so she said, I curse you. You will only be worshipped in Puskar, only in this Puskar place. You won't be worshipped any other place. So that is the situation. You won't find any other Brahma temple anywhere, at least in Bharatvaj. Only in Puska. <laughs> Maharaj is saying in Thailand they worship Brahma. <laughs> but that's outside Bharat. <laughs> okay? So that that was the, the and then there's the other Leela which we're hearing about in relation to the Mayapur Dam, that Pushkar, there was a, an, a Brahmana, he was doing Parikrama around all the holy Tirthas, and after some time he came here to Navadvi Dam. While he was here, he had a dream, and in his dream, he got instruction. Divine voice was telling him, just stay here, don't go any other place, just stay here in this place. So the Brahmana thought, you know, this instruction is coming to me. I should take it. It's coming from the Lord himself. And so he just decided he just stayed here. He stayed right here in this place. And he, he was, he stayed here for years. And he got, in his old age, he began to lament that, oh, you know, I never got to go to this holy place. I missed the opportunity to go to Puskar. I never got to go there. 
you know, pushcarts over there in Rajasthan. There's a big, big, big lake there. That's where Brahma is worshipped. And he thought, I never got the opportunity to go there to Puskar. But then he had a he had a dream, and in the dream he was told, "Go and take bath in that kund, just over there." And he took bath in that kund, and when he was bathing in the kund, then at that time Puskar appeared to him, the personification of the holy place. Puskar appeared in front of the Brahmana, and the Brahmana felt guilty. He thought, oh, oh, I've given so much trouble to Puskar that she has come here just for my benefit. But the personification of the holy place, Puskar, said to the Brahmana, no, no, you didn't give me any trouble. I didn't come from there. I reside here eternally. This is my place. This is my home. He said, that place over there, far away, that, that is just my expansion. That is some other place. You get a hundred times more benefit bathing here than you get over there. Oh. So that is the, the glory of this holy place, Puskar, that uh, Puskar personally appeared and told the Brahmana that this is Puskar. And that other place over there, that is just my, my uh, embassy, if you like. <laughs> so this is the past time. We're going to see the drama. We're going to have Pancharatna, um, if he's ready. He lost one of the actors somewhere. <laughs> Maybe they fell in the Puskar. <laughs> One minute. One minute. One minute. Yeah. Our dramas are quite spontaneous, you know. Yes, they are. <laughs> In fact, the actor that was going to, one of the actors, just dropped out, and we're just preparing another one, a substitute. So just one minute. So, which island are we in now? Madhya Madhvi. And what's the process in Madhya Madhvi? Maranam. So, are you remembering? Are you practicing remembering? So, we began in Antardweep. Antardweep, what's the process in Antardweep? Full surrender. Atmani Vedanam. Anta meaning hidden. Hidden. What was hidden? The, the, the heart of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. What was in the heart of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? He had that desire to experience that love which Radha has for Krishna. And that's why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared there in answer to it. Antar meaning hidden. The hidden desire of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was to experience that desire, that love which Radha has for Lord Krishna. So Pacharatna Prabhu is ready. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Pancharatna Prabhu. As well as uh, the devotee who played the part of... Uh, what is his name? I don't know. Sora. Sora. Sora Prabhu. Sora. Sora. From, from Delhi or... He's from Delhi. He's the title. Sora Ba. Sora Ba. Okay, and thank you, Prabhu for your wonderful drama. Okay, so we're going to go on. We have to pass uh, Kurukshetra. We won't stop there. It's just one place on the way. And there, on the way, the, on the right side, we'll see, we'll point out to you Kurukshetra, where it appears here in Navadrita. There's also another place called 
Okay, so uh, this is Panchabene. There are five rivers here. Not really visible, but anyway, this is Panchabene. And uh, we're going to be here for breakfast. So it's still early. We have some time for, uh, for kata and for some drama also. Because once we go into Navadweep, then it's difficult. There's nowhere in, in Navadweep. There's nowhere in Navadweep where we can stop, with, which is big enough for all of us to be comfortable, to hear, and to uh, learn. So, we'll make use of this place at this time. We want to thank His Grace Srivas Prabhu for leading the Kirtan from Puskar all the way here. Srivas Prabhu is from Africa, from Ghana. Yeah, he's the, the temple president in Ghana. He's also one of the teachers in Mayapur Institute. Some of you are maybe studying. You may have already had classes from Srivas Prabhu. So he was here, he's here on the Parikrama and he led the Kirtan, very nice. Uh, we're, going, we're going to hear first, because we're going over to Navadweep. I said there's three, three places in Navadweep. There's the, the Shiva Linga, which is in the marketplace. And then there's also the Bhajan Kutir Samadhi of Jagannath Babaji and the deity worshipped by Vishnu Priya of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu known as Dameshwar Mahaprabhu so first of all we're going to hear about Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj speaker will be Sri Vas Prabhu, Hare Krishna. Thank you Sri Vas Prabhu, very important instruction. Everyone get in the kirtan. If you're in the kirtan you won't mind walking. But if you're not in the kirtan, oh it's so far, oh it's so hard, oh I'm tired. So please join the kirtan. Now want to introduce one of our senior devotees who's here and a uh, very senior man he's taking part in parikrams usually every year and he brings many people he's from delhi mohan Rup prabhu thank you very much mohan Rupa prabhu you, of course, you, many of you must know how Gopal Krishna Maharaj has done a tremendous service in Delhi, developing the Yatra there. And he said it, he's done it with the help of some devotees like Mohan Rupa Prabhu and some other devotees we're going to introduce to you as we go on. Uh, 
but now like in Delhi, there's like 14 centers. Yeah. 14 centers. Yeah. And be beautiful temples. Uh, Mohan Rupa Prabhu is in charge of the Easter Kailash Temple, which is like the beacon, the, the founding center there in Delhi. I went to Delhi, I came to Delhi from the UK, from the US, 1975 I came there in Delhi. We were in Bengali market in a small rented house and there was four or five devotees and Radhapartha Sarati. But now in Delhi there's, it's just huge and the, the temples are packed, many, many people, huge congregations. So we're very grateful to the wonderful service done by all the devotees there. So next, next speaker, because it will take some time, the prasadams come, but it has to be offered, make arrangements. We're going to hear from one of the other devotees from Delhi, who has also be, been playing a, a major part over the years. That's His Grace Rukmini Krishna Prabhu. Rukmini Krishna Prabhu was in charge of Pandabi Bhag for some years. And now he's traveling and preaching, developing around because in, in the coming future he will take sannyas and continue yeah. to Thank you very, very much, Rukmini Krishna Prabhu. Last night, Kavi Chandra Swami was giving answers to everyone's questions for more than an hour. Those of you who went home, then you would miss out on that. You missed every evening we have question and answers. We had also a lecture from His Holiness Dear Damodar Swami Maharaj last night. Those of you who went back after Prasadam, you missed it. So, uh, it's nice to stay out. You know, austerity is a little austerity. Lokana Swami describes this and you know some people have three-star hotel, some people four-star, you know, sleep out on Parikrama, many stars. Very nice residence. So, Kabi Chandra. Huh? Uh, Hare Krishna, the Guru Kul uh, boys, if you can hear me, please come forward. Hare Krishna. Is it ready? Is he ready to speak? No, oh. So His Holiness Gopal Krishna Goswami Maharaj is watching live. Oh, okay, so here's Kavi Chandra Swami Maharaj. We'll have some Kadan here. This is Devananda Mat. Godia Mat. Branch of actually this is the temple of Keshava Maharaj who gave so proud for Sanya. So, uh, this temple is also known as Aparat Banda Stan. Aparat Banda Stan means the place where we can be forgiven for offenses. Did you ever commit any offenses? Yes. Only sometimes, eh? So this is an important place to pray to be forgiven for offenses. But this temple is known after Devananda Pandit, this is Devananda Ma. Devananda Pandit was the person who was forgiven for his offenses. Uh, so Devananda Pandit was running a, a Bhagavad Kata, he was teaching Srimad Bhagavatam. But he was not actually devotee. He was a scholar, but he was teaching Srimad Bhagavatam. And he had a 
a group of young men who were coming there and who were hearing Bhagavad from him. He was like their guru. So it happened that Shiva's Pandit, he came here because he wanted to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. And there was nowhere else to go where he could hear Srimad Bhagavatam. So he thought he would come here to Devananda Pandit, uh, to his uh, ashram, and hear Bhagavad Gita from him. So he came and he sat in the back of the class. There was a group of students who were all the followers of Devananda Pandit. And Srivas came and he sat down and he was hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. But by hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam, his ecstasy was aroused, his bhav for Lord Krishna was awakened just by hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam. We know different examples are there, how Kundari Pajanidi, he just heard one sloka of Srimad Bhagavatam. And he erupted, he fell on the ground and rolled on the ground for hours, flooded the floor in tears, just by hearing one verse of Srimad Bhagavatam. So Srivas Pandit, he heard Srimad Bhagavatam, and his Baba was aroused, and he also felt ecstasy, and he was rolling on the ground a bit and making some strange sounds. So the students of Devananda Pandit, they looked at him and they considered this person is a disturbance. He's giving trouble to us. We're trying to hear Srimad Bhagavatam and he is disturbing us. So they picked him up and dragged him out and dumped him on the ground outside. So this was an offense on their part. And they were the students of Devananda Pandit. Now Devananda Pandit, he should have stopped them because he was their teacher. But Devananda Pandit didn't do anything. He just let his students mistreat Srivas Pandit. And they dragged him out. They, they just were very rude to him. They did not understand the transcendental nature of his ecstatic symptoms. And they thought his behavior was just something mundane was a disturbance to them. So the result of their bad behavior to Shiva's Pandit, it came on Devananda Pandit because Devananda Pandit was their teacher and he had to take the reactions for the offensive behavior of his students. Just like sometimes people would write to Srila Prabhupada and they would complain. They would say that one of your disciples forced me to purchase a book. I didn't want to purchase a book, but your disciple forced me to give money and purchase one of your books. So Srila Prabhupada would have to write back to them and say, I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry, please forgive the enthusiasm of my disciples. They do not know how to behave properly, but at the same time, Srila Prabhupada would, in, would preach to the, the person and explain to them that they have some enthusiasm for spreading Krishna consciousness, trying to understand they've dedicated their lives to this work, and I'm very sorry for the trouble which they gave you. So in this way, Prabhupada was apologizing for the behavior of his disciples. The misbehavior of the devotee comes on the spiritual teacher. So we are all representing Srila Prabhupada. He is the founder Acharya. And it's up to all of us to behave properly. Otherwise, it's 
a blemish on the character of Srila Prabhupada, that he accepted people of low, of low standards, who are uneducated and who don't behave properly, he is accepting all of them into the Krishna consciousness movement. So Devananda Pandit, he had to suffer for the offensive behavior of his students. So it happened at one point, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu met with Devananda Pandit. And Devananda Pandit requested Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, please bless me. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu looked at Devananda Pandit and sneered and said, I will never bless an offender of pure devotees. I will never give mercy to anyone who is an offender of pure devotees. There's another example, of course, of this that one time Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was sitting on the altar, the Vishnu temple. He was sitting on the Vishnu temple in the home of Sri Vastakura and he was giving blessings to all the devotees. So one devotee said, what about Mother Sachi? Give blessings to Mother Sachi. But Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu looked at the devotees and said, No, I can never give blessings to Mother Sachi. She is an offender of pure devotees. So everyone was shocked to hear, Mother Sachi, your own mother, you won't give blessings to your own mother? And you're telling us she's an offender of pure devotees? So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explained that Mother Satchi had committed offense mentally against Advaita Acharya because Mother Satchi's first son, her eldest son, Vishwarup, had been going to the home of Advaita Acharya and hearing Shastra from the mouth of Advaita Acharya. So, at some point, it was arranged that Mother Sachi and her husband Jagannath Mishra thought that it's time for her eldest son to get married. And they began to think who would make a suitable wife for their son, Vishwarup. So Vishwarup understood what his parents were thinking and he decided he didn't want to get married. So he left home, suddenly disappeared, and he never came back to place. He left home and he took sannyas. So Mother Sachi, mentally, she considered that my son had been going regularly to the home of Advaita Acharya. And Advaita Acharya must have preached to him about the futility, about the, the uselessness of a life wasted in family affairs. So Vishwara decided he didn't want to enter into family life. And Mother Sachi blamed Advaita Acharya for this. Although Mother Sachi had never actually said anything openly, but within her mind she was thinking, Advaita Acharya has influenced my son to leave home and go and take Sanya. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, I will not give mercy to Mother Sachi because she has offended pure devotee, Advaita Acharya. So then the devotees immediately arranged to bring Mother Sachi and Advaita Acharya. And of course Advaita Acharya was saying, Mother Sachi offend me? No, not possible. She's the Divine Mother. How could she ever commit any offense against me? So Advaita Acharya was coming and as we, they were bringing Advaita Acharya, I became so overwhelmed in love, in love of Krishna that he fainted, he collapsed on the ground. So at that time they ran, they brought Mother Sachi immediately, taking the dust from his feet. 
So Mother said she came forward and she took the dust from the feet of Advaita while he was in the unconscious condition. And in this way she became relieved from her offense. So in this way Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was teaching his own mother and all the devotees, all of us, the importance, don't offend the devotees. So Devananda Pandit came to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asking for mercy. And Mahaprabhu told him, you are an offender of pure devotees. I will never give you blessings. I will never be merciful to you. So Devananda Pandit was stunned. He did not know immediately what he had done. Anyway, it happened in course of time that another devotee Vakrishwara Pandit was in this area and as we heard yesterday in one of the dramas Vakrishwara Pandit, how many hours could he dance? 72, right, 72 hours non-stop and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was saying you are like a wing, one of my wings Maharaj is telling me, now it's going to be Arti. <laughs> so after Arti, we can continue the Tata. So anyway, I will explain here, there's also a deity of Lord Varaha. You see the deity of Lord Varaha there. It's uh, because Lord Varaha appeared here in the Satya Yuga. In every age, the Lord appears in Navadvip Dhamma. So in Satya Yoga, he appears here as Lord Varaha. In the Treta Yoga, he came as Lord Ramachandra. In Dwapara Yoga, he came as Lord Krishna. And in the Kali Yoga, he came as... I don't know, what name is that? So in every age, Sambhavami Yuge Yuge, every age the Lord comes. So we will see Lord Paraha, in Lord Paraha. Uh, Maharaj, what time is the Arti? We'll do our Arti now and then right after that is Right now. Right now. Hare Krishna, ask everyone, you can sit down, please don't put the bags to the deity, you should sit on your back side. Don't turn your back to the deity. Don't turn your back on the back on the deity. So we were explaining how this, is, this place is called Aparad Banda Stan. The place where you can be forgiven for offenses. And Devananda Pandit had committed an offense against Srivas Pandit. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu refused to give him any mercy. But then it happened that Vaishnishwara Pandit was doing some kirtan and he was chanting and dancing. And you know, he could dance for three days. So it happened that while he was chanting and dancing, people were, some people would get in the way and disturb him. But Devananda Pandit came and he saw uh, Vakrishwara Pandit dancing and he made sure that people would not disturb him. 
Devananda Pandit took the responsibility to arrange for Bhakteshwara Pandit's kirtan to go on without disturbance and without any interruption. And when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard about this, then he was he appreciated that Devananda Pandit was not actually such a bad person and then he gave instructions to Devananda Pandit that you should go to Shiva's Pandit and get free from your offenses. So Devananda Pandit went to the home of Shiva's Thakur and begged forgiveness for any offense against him and in this way Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, accepted Devananda Pandit and taught him Srimad Bhagavatam. He taught him the importance how you cannot understand the behavior of the pure devotee. Without being a Vaishnava, you will not understand the behavior of the pure devotee. So Devananda Pandit in this way got forgiven for his offense. And this place is an opportunity for all of us to be forgiven for offense. Now we have a message from His Holiness Jatpataka Swami Maharaj. Thank you. Jatpataka Swami Maharaj. Okay, so Maharaj didn't speak about the Dhami Shorma Prabhu Ji. He was. Yeah, we should be going to ask Maharaj to speak about it. Okay, thank you very much, Delhi devotees. That was a very... I only asked them on the way here to organize the drama. They didn't get much time to prepare, but they gave us a very nice presentation. All right, so we're going to walk to the camp now. Thank you very much. Okay, we're going to camp. It's not a long way. Join the kirtan. His Holiness Bhakti Radnakar Ambarish Maharaj. So, everyone know that verse? You don't know it? You have Srimad Bhagavatam at home? You don't know this verse? What's going on? The Britta Tasha. The Bosha that's dropped from an opera. Vinapashutna, the killer of animals, or the killer of his soul, the killer of his own self, then they cannot get the mercy, they cannot understand Srimad Bhagavatam, they cannot understand the glories of the Holy Name. They are so covered because they kill animals, because they perform simple activities. So, Vinapashupna, everyone can get the mercy except these people. So, uh, we were hearing about Devananda Pandit, we were speaking on Devananda Pandit, how he, wanted, how he got relief from his offenses by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He, he instructed him, he said, don't ever think you've understood Srimad Bhagavatam. 
That is one instruction Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave to Devananda Pandit. Devananda Pandit had opened the school, he was teaching Srimad Bhagavatam, but they could not properly respect Srivas Pandit. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Devananda Pandit, don't ever think you have understood Srimad Bhagavatam. It is so deep because Srimad Bhagavatam is literary incarnation of Lord Krishna. And how can we ever understand the limits of Lord Krishna? Lord Krishna is ever expanding his own glories. And Srimad Bhagavatam is like Lord Krishna. It's unlimited. We can simply taste a few drops of the nectar of Srimad Bhagavatam. So we went to Navadweep, we saw the uh, Dameshwar Mahaprabhu, an important point in relation to this deity of Mahaprabhu. It is said in the Treta Yuga, Lord Ramachandra had come here. Lord Ramachandra came in Navadweep down and uh, he enjoyed the beauty of Madhya Madhvip. Uh, no, uh, Modha Drumadvi, Modha Drumadvi. We've not gone there yet, we'll be going there. You'll hear about the past times how Lord Ramachandra appreciated the beauty and he told his wife how in the future he'll be taking sannyas. So, uh, Lord Ramachandra, of course, his own wife departed from the world and Lord Ramachandra as the king he had to perform regular sacrifices, but he had no wife, and he had vowed, Ekapadni Brat, only one wife, no other wife. So how to perform yagya? How can he be a king without a wife? It's not possible. So when he would do yagya, he had the deity of Mother Sita made, and he would sit with Mother Sita by his side in her deity form. So in the Treta Yuga, Lord Ramachandra was worshipping, he was with Mother Sita in her deity form. He ruled the world how many thousand years? Lord Ramachandra ruled the world? There are many thousand, I think, 30 thousand. No, no, much more than that. Yeah, 30, because it's Chaitanya Yuga, so he's living 100,000 years. Yeah, so like 30,000 or more years, he was ruling the world. Continuously, regularly performing Yagya, and Mother Sita is there in her deity form. And then Kali Yuga comes along, and his wife, Vishnu Priya. What age was she when, when Lord Chaitanya left home and took sannyas? 16 years old, 16 years, a young girl with no child, and therefore she has her deity. She was worshipping the deity of Mahaprabhu. That was her husband, in the deity form. So the situation was reversed. In the Treta Yuga, Lord Ram's wife was there in the deity form. In the Kali Yuga, Vishnu Priya is there with her, her husband, in the deity so that one Lila from Dameshwar Mahaprabhu. And then uh, Jagannathas Babaji Maharaj. We want to understand about this Babaji. Babaji, uh, this kind of renunciation. This is actually Paramahamsa Babaji, the position of Babaji's. The Babaji's, they don't wear saffron. The saffron, that's material. Material ashram. Um, Brahmachari, Gana, Vihasta, Vanaprasanya. Material. But Babaji's, they're Paramahamsas. They're transcendental. Nothing to do with the material world. They don't wear saffron, they wear white. White is the color of Paramahamsas. Right? Yeah. Don't laugh. <laughs> right. So the Babaji's, 
Then we have those Babaji was in white, he was up. Do we have Babaji initiation in Iskon? Well, there was. It happened. There was one incident in Srila Prabhupada's time. There was one devotee, a young American man. They brought him, the devotees had brought him to Mayapur and they told Srila Prabhupada, they said, this devotee has got some disease and he doesn't have long to live. He's going to leave the body soon. But he's going to colleges and he's preaching to people about how he's preparing for death. He's preparing for leaving the world by practicing Krishna consciousness. So they suggested to Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, can he take sannyas? He would like to take sannyas. So Srila Prabhupada listened and he, he said to the devotees, he said, no, I said, that's not for sannyas. Sannyas is, is meant for propaganda work. Sannyasis are meant for traveling and preaching and making propaganda for the Sankirtan movement. He said, if this man's got a disease and he's dying, he said he should simply come here, stay here in Mayapur and sit and chant the holy name. He said he can be initiated, Babaji initiation. We'll give him the Babaji initiation. So this was something new in Iskon. I think it was the year 1976. I'm not sure. Like that, I said, it's Trump, I mean, so the devotee was getting white cloth, you know, just down to the knees, and he got a water pot, and he was given a room in Mayapur, and every day he used to go to Ganga, sit on the bank to the Ganga, and chant Hare Krishna, chanting every day 64 rounds. Prabhupada said it's the best way to prepare for leaving the world. So for some months it went on and then somehow the young man decided he wanted to go and see a doctor. He went to see a doctor. The doctor said, nothing wrong with you. <laughs> You're not going to die. Nothing wrong with you. So when he heard that, he said, really? <laughs> He gave up Babaji, went back to America, became a Kami. <laughs> Mara said he went back to his good old friend named Maya. <laughs> anyway, he went back to the West and forgot about Krishna consciousness. So Prabhupada, when he heard Prabhupada said, no more Babaji's. <laughs> He said, that's it. No more Babaji's initiation in Iskon. So, uh, try to understand. Jagannath does Babaji, Gorkishor does Babaji. They were Paramahamsas. They had nothing to do with the material world. They were, sorry, not. We were hearing pastimes this morning from uh, Rukmini Krishna Prabhu was describing very nice pastime. I don't know if my left, you got any more pastime? Yeah, we heard that. We heard most of them. Anyway, uh, yeah, this is the place of this ashram, this Keshvama ashram, as Trapataka Maharaj was saying. Prabhupada did not take sannyas here. He took sannyas from Keshvama Maharaj, but in the Mathura temple, over at Mathura. He took his sannyas there. Before. So, uh, Prabh uh, Prabhupada came to Keshava Maharaj and he told Keshava Maharaj, he said, they think I keep having dreams. My, spirit, or sp my spiritual master, Keshava Maharaj's spiritual master as well, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada. It's coming in my dream. So Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhu was saying to Keshava Maharaj, who was his god brother, that my Guru, our Guru Maharaj is coming in my dream. And he's telling me, he's told me several times, I have to take sannyas. And he asked Keshava Maharaj, what do you think? And Keshava Maharaj said, yes, you should do it. You have to do it. So Prabhupada 
except Keshwa Maharaj is a sannyas guru and he was initiated over in Mathura. So, Bhadra Purnima. Bhadra Purnima. On the day of Bhadra Purnima, when is the actually? In September. So that's past that about Keshava Maharaj. And uh, Japataka Maharaj didn't speak on the Leela of Lord Barahadev. He said there is a Leela. It's described in the Navadvita Mahatmya how there was a Brahmana in the Satya Yuga who worshipped Lord Varaha and he very much desired to see Lord Varaha. And Lord Varaha actually appeared here in this place in Navadvita Dham. And that's how the deity of Lord Varaha is there. It was on the left side of the altar there. And yet Lord Varaha appeared in the white color. In the Satya, there are two Varahas mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam. There's the reddish and there's the white. But they appear in different yugas, in different cultures. And, and it said the pastimes are and one pastime is picking up the earth from the bottom of the universe and the other pastime is killing Haranyaksha. But in Srimad Bhagavatam, Srila Vyasa did amalgamate or brought the two pastimes together in one. But actually there were two Varahas in different ages. So the worship of Lord Varaha was, used to be very prominent. Nowadays people are more, they like to worship Lord Nishringadev. We don't see too many people worship Lord Varaha. But it, in South India it's very popular. There was even one kingdom there and the king was such a devotee of Lord Varaha that the currency was called Varaha. It's gold, coins, the coins was all in, measured in Varaha after Lord Varaha. So he was dev devoted to Lord Varaha. So the past time of Lord Varaha uh, he appeared in here and then uh, Keshava Maharaj Ashram, we spoke about Sachimata, we heard about Pradamaya. Pradamaya is Yoga Maya in Vrindavan. <coughs> in Vrindavan, she is Purnamasi, known as Purnamasi, but in Navadvi, she becomes Prada Maya. And sometimes people ask, Mayapur, why, why, why this name Mayapur? Is Mayapur all Maya? Is so much my place of Maya? <laughs> well, it, it's the effect of Maya that that Prada Maya she covers up the dam from the common people. Materialistic people who come in the dam, they cannot understand the glory and the, the, the actual power of this holy dam by the influence of Maya, that she covers it from them. So that is the uh, service which Prada Maya is doing here. Along with uh, Prada Shiva, Prada Maya, they are the Shetrapas. They are the protectors of this holy dam. And they protect the holy dam from the common people by covering it by the Maya potency. So if you went in to see the deity there of uh, Prada Maya, it's just, just behind in the back of the, the market, we came down the main road. It was just to the side, just in behind of the main road. All right. So, Maharaj, want to add anything?